All right, guys, so it's November, it's December, and you came up with this great idea that you want to start a snow plowing business. I mean, why not? You've got a truck. What I'm going to go over here in this video is the proper way to start a snow removal business. This is not for the chucks with a truck, guys. If you want to do things properly, if you want to learn from my mistakes, please continue watching the video. If you want to see more videos of how to run a business properly, snow removal specifically, comment down below, subscribe, and then you'll be alerted with more videos as they come live. You can also join us on Facebook on Snow Removal Insight, where we're gonna also share more tips and tricks and videos there to help you with the snow removal industry. So let's just dive into this, guys. Let's face it. Most people start the snow removal industry with a truck and they think it's just this fabulous idea. Let's jump in. That's uh, essentially how I did it. Heck, I didn't even have a truck. I had a tractor. So I have looked, I have looked and looked on the internet. I'm not gonna lie guys, there is a lot of blind leading the blind out there on YouTube. There's people that, you know, they're saying that they're making absolute killing and in my opinion, they're not making anything. Probably this guy. <laughs> no, it's not that guy. Uh, there's, there's so many people out there that are just absolutely bragging about the chump change that they are bringing in. So what I wanna do here, guys, is I just wanna talk about my mistakes, what I should have done differently, and hopefully what you guys will do differently if you're wanting to start a snow removal business. So let's dive into this. First, you gotta go back to summer. That's right, summer. If you go back all the way to summer, guys, that's when the true snow removal businesses out there are hustling and getting things ready for the winter. What are they doing exactly? Well. They're making sure their insurance is in place, they're lining up their clients, and they're going over their equipment. So in order to start out as a new company, the first thing and ultimately the most important thing that you guys need to make sure that you have is proper snow plowing insurance. It amazes me how many people out there do not have it or they feel like it is their liability insurance on their vehicle. It is not, trust me when I say that it is not. What it is, is it's, pro it's proper business insurance that allows you to be protected in the event that any essentially slip and falls were to happen. Guys, in order to start a snow removal business, you need to understand you are not doing snow plowing, you are not moving snow. You are trying to prevent slip and falls from happening. That's the type of industry you are in. I, you, those that listen to me are probably going to get sick of me saying that over and over and over again, but I need to drill it into some of your guys' heads because you guys just don't get it. You think that it's about moving snow around and it's not. Uh, you think that you can have a, a caveat or a disclaimer on your agreement that you can't be sued. Uh, that doesn't stop you from being sued, guys. It, it really doesn't. Trust me. I've been sued. Not in snow removal. It was real estate, but I've been sued and I had a caveat on the agreement. Still got sued. So I'm gonna add in, in the top corner here, one of them, a link to another video that is gonna go more in detail of how to go about getting proper snow removal liability insurance. That video is also gonna be good for those that are renewing and they're complaining that either A, their insurance is not servicing or, or not wanting to service the area that you provide snow removal in, or you're experiencing problems trying to get insurance and other aspects of it, or your insurance rates are jumping a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars. Uh, how is it that you can better yourself and better prepare yourself for renewal time and help keep your rates lower? So click on the link, take a look and give it a like. This, is, this video is not for the people that want to start a snow removal business and just simply be a chuck in a truck. This is for the people that are gonna do it properly. So after you go out and get insurance, what do you need next? You've already got the truck. You think you're gonna need a plow. Not really. Um, you could, you can start pricing these things out, guys. But essentially, plows are fairly plentiful. Check your provider uh, or supplier um, for what they have in stock. But keep in mind, this is the summer, guys. So. The only people that are already doing this and pricing stuff out are the people that are already in the game. They already know that um, plows are very accessible. In fact, you can get them on sale fairly well in the summer. Why? Because they're not selling plows very much in the summer. So push the plow off to the side, guys. You wanna get your insurance in order first. Now, 
you don't need to necessarily buy the insurance, but you want to get approved. You want to find out what it's going to cost you and you want to get approved. The next thing that you want to do is you probably want to start reaching out to potential clients telling maybe you have a client base already for the industry that you already are in and you're going to want to send out emails to those people and say hey i'm starting a snow removal business um we're going to be properly insured we're looking at servicing your area do you know if you'd be interested do you have any clients that are interested for us personally we do not do residential driveways guys so i really don't have much advice for that um there's a lot of people that are out there that are just bragging with how much money that they make they've got you know 90, 100, 250 driveways. They charge $20, $50 uh, a, a plow. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna waste any of my time trying to understand it. Um, I, I just won't. There, there's bigger fish to fry in the industry, guys, and that's what my business goes after ever since day one. And as the years have gone on, I've kind of figured out how to get those clients and how to how to make the bigger the bigger dollars. So that's that's kind of what I'm trying to gauge you guys into going for. So when I'm when I'm talking about bigger dollars, guys, is I'm trying to focus on making sure that you, if you can have a truck. Um, out there in a snow event, you're going to be bringing in $1,200 or more per truck per hour. That's what I'm focusing on. And that's just with one guy in a truck plowing. Okay. So you're still waiting for a quote for insurance. You've got uh, some contacts, you know, you, that you've sent out emails to, to introduce your new endeavor. Uh, how else can you get some new clients guys? I know it's Again, we're doing this in the summer. I know it's summer, but believe it or not, um, small business uh, ads on Facebook do wonders for the entry level snow removal company. Um, people really aren't thinking about snow removal. However, there's a lot of snow removal companies out there that are quite shady, unreliable, over service. They take advantage of their clients. Um, if you can hit those clients that had a bad experience last year, trust me when they see a snow removal ad on facebook they're going to be very um uh, attentive to it and they're going to respond they're going to send a message asking about it um so so there's several different ways that you can try and get new clients if you have a website already because you have an existing business that you're adding snow removal to then get that snow removal page on there and try and optimize it as best you can whether it's through SEO or whether it's through Google uh, My Business or um, Google Google Ads. But you wanna try and get as much out there as possible. Now keep in mind, Google SEO, uh, it takes a while for your business, your website to rank well. It takes months for it to rank well with a new item. So this is again why if you're thinking you're gonna start a snow removal business in November and December, uh-uh roll back several months start in the summer and you've got a lot of work to do so get that website ready and get that uh, web page for snow removal up and running so you've got multiple streams of different ways that you're trying to get clients essentially you're fishing you're you're trolling and you're waiting for those bites build a client list as people are emailing you and saying hey i'm, I'm interested or they're reaching out to you just get their information and just say, yeah, we're not quite ready to send out the quotes right now. We got some numbers that we're finalizing, but uh, give me your name, your address, your phone number, and we'll, we'll contact you when we're ready. Again, you still don't have snow removal insurance. You haven't signed up any clients. You know though, how much a snow removal insurance is gonna cost you, and you know that now you're getting some interest, okay? So now what's the next thing, is to rush out and go get a plow, mm, maybe. Uh, you could go go out and get a plow, I guess. I mean, start shopping, but you don't want to just focus on a plow, guys. You also want a salter. Why, why, why do you need a salter? The salter is the money maker, guys. It's not the plow. It's the back of the truck. Um, it also is what helps prevent you from having any slip and falls. Uh, is the salting? It's definitely an important aspect of snow removal. So any time that plowing does happen you do have to salt afterwards. In our environment that we are in, in the West Coast, we have to salt on days that are zero degrees or colder, which is, again, I think 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for us uh, Southern folk. But uh, we have to salt at those temperatures. The reason is because we are in a rainforest in the West Coast and frost and slippery conditions may form on those days. I've had several videos in the past that have proven it but it does happen. So 
it's not just a plow guys a snow removal business is not just a plow so you have to get a plow you have to get a salter so you can start it's still the summer guys you can start pricing it out you can start figuring it out you can expect by the time you factor in a plow a salter and insurance that you're probably going to be around 30 grand uh that's my guess uh you can buy used for sure you can i don't really recommend it that is how i did it um i'm quite handy if you're not handy i do not recommend you doing i don't recommend you doing snow removal at all to be honest with you because you have to be able to do repairs even with new equipment um but essentially you can buy used i just don't recommend it guys try and start your business right and start it with good equipment uh that you have backing from the supplier with uh it just helps things so much uh go 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 so much smoother now again you you, you got kind of three things going on now you might have a plow on, on order or a salter on order or on hold or something like that you might have um your insurance uh, price you're getting a couple different quotes from two different people maybe three different people for snow removal uh, and you've got you're building your client list and you're you're really getting excited and you just want to get that first client and that's what you think you have to do that's not not what you have to do you now have to make sure that you have a really good snow removal or snow plowing agreement now there's a lot of people out there that do offer um, free agreements uh, I did do a video I'll try and post another link up above of some pretty uh pretty crazy like way out of left field things that you need to have on your agreement for snow removal but my advice to you guys is i'm not ready to um just hand out my snow removal agreement because there's been a lot of energy put into it um and a lot of time a lot of a lot of money um but what i'm what i'm what I'm thinking you guys should be doing is trying to get all the free ones that you can uh, there's definitely a lot of good points in them and then make one of your own and then hire a lawyer that's going to cost some money i do understand but the, again you're not in the snow plowing industry and when you talk to the lawyer they might be a bit naive too they might think it's just snow removal it's not a big deal it's not you are in the slip and fall mitigation business guys so you want to have a contract that's going to help protect you having a nice tight contract is also going to help you with getting cheaper insurance so it's a two-way street with that one it, it helps in several things so you gotta get that all buttoned up figured out and ready to go before you get your first client why because once they sign that contract now you have them as a client they are yours you are responsible for their property so it's not until you have your insurance finally finalized bought and paid for your plow bought and paid for your salter bought and paid for and uh your agreement is figured out that you finally reach out to your clients and you start bidding on those clients now i'm not going to spoon feed you on the prices to bid but like i said earlier is that what you want to focus on trying to get is you want to try and make it so that each one of your plow trucks is bringing in twelve hundred dollars per hour I know that it is very, very, very far-fetched for some of you guys to understand. And I'm ready for it. Hit me with your best shot, guys, because I've been watching and, and, and watching several different videos from several different people of how to start a snow removal business or how to charge and stuff like that. And you see in the comments that, oh my gosh, that's too little. I don't drop my plow for any less than $100 or anything like that. I wouldn't drop my plow for $100 either like like they're saying that they would i wouldn't there's no way a hundred dollars isn't even near enough so guys uh comment below call me that i'm on crack i really don't care because i've heard it before i've seen it in many different groups um th there's people out there that are making some crazy money in the snow removal industry and rightfully so it's not only hard but it is just such an expensive industry to be in the wear and tear on the trucks is just absolutely second to none uh, there is no other industry that is hard on your equipment as the snow removal industry the hours the amount of standby the the fact that you're giving up your vacation time uh for all of winter you can't go on a single vacation uh, because you have to be uh, ready at the drop of the hat for these clients. Um, I could go on and on guys, but this is why you need to be charging a lot for snow removal. The salting shifts are even more lucrative. Now, 
if you want to go out there and work for free guys bless your heart i mean go for it i'm not going to talk you out of it go for it if that's what you want to do and if this, this snow removal is your way of trying to give back and doing the good deeds but for me and how we run the business is that it is the best way it's going to be the way that i'm going to be able to retire it really will be and those that are doing snow removal property properly will say the same thing it is extremely lucrative and uh, if done properly and what i mean by properly is what i've outlined here uh going to fla a flashback to when i started guys um like i already told you guys i started i didn't even have a truck i had a tractor we salted things with jugs the only thing that i did right was i had proper liability insurance and if there's one thing that you guys get out of this guys just get your insurance so once you have everything purchased for guys, you've got your insurance, you've got your plow, you got your salter, you got your agreement, you've got your clients that have signed the agreement. Now you get to have your fun of pushing snow around, but it doesn't stop there. You, you can't just go mindless and start pushing snow around and everything like that. That's where you got to start doing things properly, guys. Having pictures before and after, preferably GPS time stamped. Um, documenting everything with hard copy as well. I do not trust just electronic or digital apps. Uh, we have all of our trucks having ledgers and making sure that there's in times, out times, addresses, everything is documented. Every single truck is named. That way uh, on any, any invoice that gets sent out, all that information is on there as well. Um, all of this stuff guys really helps in the future so that if you have a client that says you weren't there or blah, 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 there's so many times that they could complain as the years have gone on i've been able to weed out those clients and i don't even have them anymore they just hire us and trust us but as long as you have this stuff that backs you that you were there you did it this was what it looked like before this is what it looks like after they can't argue that you serviced or you didn't service so it's very important to make sure that you have all this stuff and again you're running sorry a plane there again you're running a business you're not running a chuck in a truck. If that's what you want to do, guys, take a hike. I'm not going to help you get any better, bigger business. You're not going to listen to anything that I have to say, and you're just going to roll your eyes anyway. See you later. I really don't care. But you're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to make the good money. And you're honestly, you're, 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 you're going to be running a very risky business, running, running the risk of losing everything you have if something bad were to happen because you cut one you know one shortcut and didn't get insurance uh if you, yeah i'm not i can't even get into it it just gives me so freaking worked up but if you're gonna if you're gonna do um if you're gonna do this for beer money guys again this isn't this isn't a video for you go do it for beer money go out there and plow your driveways go go put a plow on your truck a ten thousand dollar plow on your truck uh, go plow driveways for $100 a pop or, or, or parking lots for $100 a pop and it's going to take forever to pay off your plow. You're going to think that you're freaking rolling in the money and you're going to be the one and you see it in all these Facebook groups and you see it over the t over as years go by. You're going to be the one that says, there's no money in snow removal. I'm getting out of the industry. And that's where you're dead wrong. Please like and subscribe guys. I hope this video has helped those that are thinking of getting into the snow removal industry. It kind of opens the light on what you potentially can charge. This isn't a how to charge video. This is a how to start a snow removal uh, or snow plowing business. How to doing it the right way that is. So like and subscribe guys, comment down below. I'm ready, hit me with your best shot. You don't think that I make 1200 bucks an hour per truck and I have eight trucks? I really don't care. You can do the math, guys. It's, it's a very profitable business. Take care.